The Orn Airport is located in the south-south area of Port Harcourt, Nigeria and is one of the largest eastern ports in the country. The port operations is a beehive of activities, well organized by the Queen Bee of the Port, an organization popularly referred to as the Landlords of the Port, the Nigerian Port Authority. As a critical agency, the Nigeria Customs Service works hand-in-hand -hand with the NBA and other stakeholders to carry out the federal government fiscal policies at the port. My name is Mrs. A.J.M. Barbara Nche Achuku. I'm the head of Corporate and Strategic Communications, MPO Netport Complex. We are actually the landlord of um, on the port complex. We are the landlord, and we have in our ports um, some terminal operators. We have Brower, we have Watts, we have um, Intels, and we have IC uh, on the multi multi-purpose terminal that just came. And we are into imports and we are into exports. Uh, we probably have our host communities around us too. So we are actually a port that is viable. We appreciate customs a lot and um, I'd like to congratulate them for the revenue generation. You know, they're actually one of the agencies that are generating so much for the federal government. I'd like to applaud them for that. We have a very robust working relationship if, uh, especially with our sister uh, agency, the MPA, who have been working with us right from time being. We, have, we used to have regular meetings with them and other security agencies to brainstorm and see how to move the area or the port in general forward. I would like to appreciate the fact that we have a synergy with the customs, um, but I'd like us to cement it, you know, by um, looking at um, certain issues that have to do with um, the port process manual, which encourages um, joint examination by customs, SON, and NAFDAC. Uh, uh, I'm aware that in the examination there, everything that has to do with uh, custom uh, actually take uh, place there. So um, one would expect that when they come out by the gates, FOT gates or FLT gates, uh, they would start the examination all over. And I wouldn't expect to, or one would expect that when they get out of the port, they will start examining them again. So these are things I want us to look at together so as to avoid bottlenecks and wasting of time. And you know, time is money. And for a businessman, any little time wasted, it costs so much. As I told you earlier on, you know, custom is our friend. We are, we are friendly, we relate with one another, and we, we compare notes every now and then. But I appreciate the, 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 the need that we synergize together so that we have less wasting of time. My office relates with uh, the communities. We have, um, we have three communities that we host communities. We have um, Une, we have Ogun, and we have um, Ele. These are our host communities. We have a cordial relationship with them. At least I could say we've not been fighting. We have a cordial relationship with them. When we have issues, we have a way of relating with one another. We come for boardroom meetings. Like we have um, the Joint Free Zone Community Relations uh, Initiative, which is the platform where we have all the terminal operators meet to discuss issues that has to do with the communities. We have um, the batting meeting. We have um, the security meetings, and we have and we have other meetings, other platforms, where we discuss issues as relating to, to the ports. And of course, my office, where we have issues that has to do with community relationship. And where there are issues, they always come through my office to the port manager. And corporate social responsibilities uh, is actually one of our strategies we use to reach out to them. Thank God for the managing director and the executives that are always planning ahead you know, to ensure that we have a friendly environment by empowering them, by training, and um, by giving them contracts and employment. We allow them to initiate projects, and um, when they do, we analyze them, 
the one that the port management can handle, you know, with respect to our budgets. We look at it and we handle it. But the one that is above our budget, we forward it to headquarters. Because if we don't have a friendly host community, uh, there will be no business. So that's why we try as much as possible to work with the host community. We empower them. We, we give them contracts. Um, not too long ago, we had the widows sweep uh, 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 common user facilities, and we also have a way of um, empowering the youths. Not too long ago, we gave um, electricity, these um, solar electricity, uh, what they call it, to the host communities, though we are yet to complete them. So we are working with them. But I will not deny the fact that the, uh, the other needs that we've not been able to meet because people always ask for more, which is actually expected. But we'll get there. We'll take it one at a time. Challenges. I'd like to look at um, host community. We need to look at the issue of host community. Um, a lot needs to be done there. Employment, um, recognition, and um, empowerment. The agitation is becoming overwhelming by the day. I don't want to dwell on that for some security reasons. The police and others will look into it. If that issue of um, corporate social responsibility is, um, is blown to the extent at least 65-70% is taken care of every, every year, I think that will help us a lot. And our net road network, you came in, you saw how the road is, I don't know. I think that should be taken care of. And I equally advise railway services. I know that um, the executives are looking into it, but I think um, that is it's very important that we have something like that to, to speed up transportation um, of our goods and services. Onye port is actually a, a, a hub, is a modern port. Um, since eight, 1982, Onye port, the PPP, uh, private uh, partnership, uh, uh, started off with Donair Port actually, and um, Donair Port is not doing badly. And we are favored with the kind of uh, port managers we've been having that have foresight. And we have foresight, we have a lot of prospects. When you go into FOT, you find a lot of expansion, a lot of uh, terminals are coming into there. Recently, we have a uh, multi-purpose terminal that just came in. So. Ona has a lot of prospects, and we have a lot of vast land that is yet to be occupied. So we, I would like to use this medium to encourage our investors to come forth and do business with us in Ona. Ona, we have a lot of companies in Ona, up to 100 and something plus. And they are doing well, in as much as we have the downturn of the economy now, but they are really doing well. And with that, we have employment. It's taking off stress from federal government with respect to employment. So Ona Airport has a lot of prospects. The Oil and Gas Free Zones Authority is the national regulatory agency established by the federal government of Nigeria in 1996 to regulate and manage Nigeria's oil and gas export free trade zones. The authority began regulatory operation in One River State in 2000. The first oil and gas export free zone to be established in the country is the One Oil and Gas Free Zone in River State. Subsequently, other oil and gas free zones were established as public-private partnerships between the federal government of Nigeria and private sector operators. The history of the free zones is a record of the collaboration between the federal government some states and private sector operators in the development of the logistics support base for the oil and gas industry. As has been documented by the Nigeria Ports Authority, collaboration between the federal government and private investors in port development and the building of the logistic base for the oil and gas industry dates back to 1982 when the Nigeria Ports Authority invited private sector investors to operate at the Federal Lighter Terminal. This move helped to eliminate double handling and transshipment charges, reducing the risks of damage caused by multiple handling, thereby enhancing savings. In 1996, 
the federal government of Nigeria in acknowledgement of the impressive development at One and to encourage further investments, particularly by way of foreign direct investment, declared One an oil and gas free zone under Decree No. 8 of 1996. This is the Oil and Gas Free Zones Authority here in Oné, and they are saddled with managing and are responsible for everything related to oil and gas. And at the conclusion, the Customs Area Command of the Oil and Gas Sector will be relocated here. My name is uh, Umana Okonumana, the Managing Director stroke CEO of the Oil and Gas Free Zones Authority. The mandate of the Oil and Gas Free Zones Authority is as provided uh, in uh, our extant uh, laws. And that act that established the authority provides that uh, the authority will be responsible for the management and regulation of oil and gas uh, free zones uh, in Nigeria. And uh, you must understand that uh, a free zone is a dedicated uh, area uh, and it is set up to ensure that uh, we can attract foreign direct investments uh, into Nigeria. And we do that by ensuring that uh, we provide special incentives uh, which range from financial, which cover tax uh, exemptions uh, at federal level, state level, and even local government level which also cover uh, zero import duties. Uh, and then uh, if our investors in the zones, uh, if they're looking for approvals from immigration, uh, we will also be involved to ensure that uh, the request is expeditiously treated. In a, in a sense, what the authority does is to make life easy for uh, investors, especially foreign investors who uh, come into Nigeria to do business. And what we do uh, aligns uh, with the federal government's uh, policy on the ease of doing business. Let me also say uh, right away that uh, in doing this, there's no way the Oil and Gas Free Zones Authority uh, can carry on this uh, responsibility, this mandate uh, on its own. Uh, there's collaboration with other agencies of government, especially the Nigeria Customs Service, uh, which is also uh, located in our free zones, in the ports. And uh, our law, in fact, uh, requires that uh, for the free zone to become operational, there has to be a customs uh, command. And, and, and so you will find that in all of our free zones, uh, we have uh, a full-fledged uh, customs uh, uh, presence uh, the same thing with uh, uh, immigration. So the free zone is supposed uh, to be like a one-stop shop uh, to ensure that all of the approvals can be obtained within the free zone. And uh, part of our mandate is also to coordinate the activities of the other government agencies who operate uh, in the free zone. Uh, so I, I must commend the Nigeria Customs Service for the cooperation uh, we've been receiving. Because when the federal government came up with uh, the policy on the ease of doing business, uh, one point that was uh, emphasized was the policy of one government. And one government simply means that the investors should not be looking at customs or OFSA. They should be looking at getting services from the federal government of Nigeria and uh, ensuring that uh, the business environment is conducive for them to do their business. So this means that the agencies have to work in collaboration. And uh, this, I must confess, or must confirm, uh, has been the position, especially in the Oil and Gas Free Zones Authority. We went uh, a step further to, uh, to have a service level agreement with the Nigeria Customs Service and with the Nigeria Immigration Service. And based on that customs, uh, that, that service level agreement, we set timelines for the delivery of services uh, because the only way we can benchmark uh, our, our, our performance is to set targets. So, for example, we said that in our free zones, uh, we will take uh, 48 hours 
to process cargoes that are consigned uh, to the free zones uh, authority. And uh, when we met with customs, we, we told customs that when requests come to us, we'll deal with the requests in 24 hours, and then we'll pass the request on to customs. Uh, customs has also met uh, their own uh, part of the responsibility. So it is not surprising when we won the Pebeck Awards, which uh, really should have gone to uh, OVSA and, and Customs. Well, we, we have categories of licenses as provided in our law. We have a category called the developers. A developer is uh, the anchor investor, the major investor who comes in, who provide infrastructure. If it's a private uh, zone, provide infrastructure in the zone. Because he has developed infrastructure, he can then lease space uh, to other uh, tenant investors. Then we also have the category of enterprise. Uh, so we have a license for enterprises. Uh, those are those who just come and then take up space in the free zone and uh, concentrate on special activities, maybe like refineries. Uh, we will cover a whole spectrum uh, of activities and since we are focused on uh, the oil and gas uh, uh, sector, uh, so the whole range, stream, downstream, uh, are, are covered. So our licenses will cover uh, all of those aspects, including uh, those who are involved in uh, logistics, who provide logistics and support. For example, uh, the West African containers uh, Limited worked by a developer you know, uh, in the free zone. Uh, they came in and uh, took up land, took up space, and they developed and built the infrastructure. Uh, there's also a company like Tenaris uh, who also took up space, uh, built their infrastructure, and they're producing the equipment to support the operations uh, in the uh, oil and gas uh, industry. And I must say that some of the equipment are really specialized and uh, they were previously imported. But because of the incentives provided in the free zone, uh, it's, it's, it's possible to have this uh, foreign company stamps. They set up shop in Nigeria, produce equipment in country, and so we can see that foreign direct investments uh, would mean more jobs, would mean transfer of uh, knowledge and skills and transfer of uh, technology. So uh, the numbers speak very loudly for, for us in terms of uh, the achievements over the years. Uh, we, we have attracted uh, over $10 billion of investments into our free zones uh, over the years. And uh, if you also look at the figures, uh, you'll notice that where a port also has a free zone like the uh, in a free zone, in the oil and gas free zone, because it's a port. And that port is a dual port because it is a free zone port and also a conventional port. The, the volume uh, of business, of activities in that port is higher than uh, in other ports that uh, uh, do not have uh, a free zone. A few years ago, when MPA did an analysis and published uh, figures of uh, cargo throughput, the UNA port was the leading port because it is also a free zone uh, a port. And uh, of course, we also have the situation where uh, other companies that are not free zone companies also do business with companies. Such uh, circumstances uh, the, those other companies are obligated to pay uh, taxes, VAT, withholding taxes and so on. So which also generates uh, revenues uh, uh, for government. Companies can also produce for the domestic market. So when these goods are sold to the customs territory, the Nigeria Customs Service would also generate revenues. Well, uh, I, I think the challenges uh, principally uh, be challenges of infrastructure uh, because once you must even have access into the free zone and uh, when the uh, the roads uh, 
uh, in uh, a terrible state. Uh, for example, there was a time when it could take you five, six hours to assess the report. That's a major, a major challenge, a major, a major, major challenge, a major hindrance. There's also the challenge of power. Uh, we have taken uh, proactive steps uh, to license an investor who can provide embedded power within this zone uh, to, re to reduce the cost of doing business. The free zone is not about Nigeria. It is a global tool for development. And uh, we have over 5,000 free zones in uh, about uh, 143 countries uh, in the world. Nigeria is only following the example of other countries who have uh, been very successful with uh, the use of the free zone, special economic zones. Uh, do what we have to do to attract investments. You must be globally competitive, you know, for investments. So all of this uh, so should help us in the marketing of our free zones. The Nigeria Port Authority's relationship with host communities helps in keeping the peace as well as encourage the outsend of smugglers and would-be economic saboteurs from destabilizing the peace. Also, while the partnership with the Nigeria Customs Service has been good, there is hope that further bonding and synergy is needed to cement this long relationship between the two organizations. The Oil and Gas Free Zones Authority manage and regulate oil and gas free zones in Nigeria, attracting foreign investment and special incentives. The necessary presence of the Nigeria Customs Service ensures more jobs, transfer of technology, skills, and knowledge amongst the populace, enabling the free trade zone to boost development within the country.